Hey, what's up, everybody? Why is the War of Wizard here coming to you with the first Should You Read? Yeah, that's right. I'm doing book reviews now. Not book reviews, so much book recommendations. See, unlike film media, I'm not as good at rating books. So you're not going to get a clear 0 to 10 scale with this one here. This is more... With, do, with book recommendations, it's more about a diagnosis, okay? I'm going to introduce a book, and basically I'm going to say the kind of person who would like to read it. If you're that kind of person, then you'll read it. That ain't too complicated, is it? All right, so we're starting with The Hunt for Red October, all right? Let's see if I can get my finger out of the frame. You can see it. There it is, whole thing. Now, that name. Tom Clancy. You might recognize that. You probably see it in some video game titles, some movies. Who is Tom Clancy? Well, Tom Clancy was, is, okay, he's dead now, but Tom Clancy was basically the most famous spy novelist of all time, uh, besides perhaps Ian Fleming. And he wrote the Jack Ryan series, of which this is the first book. And that's kind of interesting from the perspective of it being a franchise, because this is actually not... Jack Ryan is not, like, introduced in this one. This is not his origin story. Um, he's just a CIA operative uh, who... An analyst, really, not even, like, an operative, who goes into a situation. What is that situation? What is this book about? So, the year is 1983. And the Soviets, this is a Cold War story, because it's a spy novel, so of course it's a Cold War story. The Soviets have set up a brand new submarine called the Red October that is undetectable. An undetectable missile submarine. However, the captain of the submarine, Marco Ramius, wants to defect to the U.S. So him and his crew basically go off the grid. They become undetectable to both the Soviets and to the U.S., and it's a hunt for, between the U.S. and the Soviets to try and find them first. Okay? So, what is the appeal of this book? One, Tom Clancy goes into heavy, heavy detail on the military and uh, spy jargon. Okay? Very detailed on how the submarine works, how military structure works, how the CIA works. Um... He really allows you to get into the head of a radar detector, what it's like for uh, submarine warfare to be conducted, and that is so cool, right? Obviously, I've read this book a lot. It's pretty beat up. It's a, now this book is uh, over six, about six hundred fifty pages. That might be a tad. Now this is a small paperback, so keep that in mind. Uh, that might be a little intimidating for some people, and it is long, and it is somewhat um, drawn out, like bit say this chunk of the book this is where things start to get a little little they start to drag a little okay but the back 200 pages is all excitement and what they do is because there's two main characters you have jack ryan a cia operative trying to figure out what's happening and you have uh ramius this uh, soviet captain who wants to defect and the probably the most fascinating part of the entire story is right before the climax happens is when the Soviet crew and this American crew are just sort of interacting and the cultural differences between them. And it really helps. Um, now, obviously, this is a very pro-American story, um, but it really helps examine the two sides and the differences in culture, which I found very fascinating. It's always the part that I go back to uh, when I'm skimming through it. Now, the downsides. So again, this is a very technical, hardcore spy thriller. So sometimes things can get dense. Very dense. All right? Now, if you want a breezy read, this is not it. However, I w and it's not like clean, exciting all the way through. Again, there's a lot of setup. There's tons of characters. Uh... There's this whole puzzle that comes together of people finding them. And if you're not an attentive reader, you might miss some information or an explanation of some like technical term that would confuse you down the line. So if you're not that kind of reader, this book is not for you. However, 
if you are interested in Soviet culture, in any sort of submarine or naval warfare, especially uh, if you like spy novels, this is basically like, this is the classic American spy novel, okay? Like, this is the book. And it was adapted into a very good movie, um, The Hunt for Red October, uh, which I also recommend. So the weird thing with the Jack Ryan series is that I never actually read any books after this. I never read any of the Jack Ryan saga. And Tom Clancy jumps around in the timeline going before The Hunt for Red October to show how Jack Ryan kind of became a, per became a CIA operative. And afterwards, um, I think he actually becomes vice president at one point. Um, but uh, Jack Ryan is not a traditionally compelling character. Like, he's very confident, he's very human, uh, he, he's a cool guy, but he's a little bland, I'd have to say, the weaknesses of, like, generally in my spy thrillers, I like things to be a little less grounded, a little more crazy, off the wall, wacky, with a bunch of characters going, uh, everywhere. This, again, is very hard, if you like, a, if you want an extremely grounded, very well thought out, um, executed thriller, the Hunt for Red October is definitely going to do it for you. So yeah, that is that book. It's a very well-woven story. If you have any, uh, if you've read The Hunt for Red October, or you have any questions about it, please leave uh, your comments down below. Uh, follow me on Twitter for uh, more, uh, well, just perfectly literate insanity. So yeah, these book reviews. I'm basically going to be... I, I, I read a lot. I read tons. And I'm basically going to be putting out these until, uh, I mean, I'm not promising a video day, but I am trying to do a video a day. And while there is scripted content coming, uh, these are really easy to knock out. And I just want to get stuff out there for y'all. And also, like, making a video a day is really good for, for me. It helps to teach me how to talk get better at my delivery, looking better at the camera, setting up a camera better, and it uh, helps reinforce a schedule that makes it easier to make more videos. Like when you're constantly making videos, it's easier to make videos, but then there's two weeks that I took off uh, to make videos. It took something uh, rather drastic to get me back on track. So anyway, yeah, that's the hunt for my October. I have been Wyatt the Word Weaver, and yeah, let's see what we weave next time.